The first ever president of the United States to be assassinated was Abraham Lincoln, who on the 14th of April 1865, whilst watching a play was shot in the head. His killing shocked the nation, and following it there was a period of national mourning out of respect for him. It was John Wilkes Booth who was the one who fired the shots killing Lincoln, but following his death there were a number of executions of people who were involved in the plot. Booth was killed following a 12-day chase, but the plot went deeper as other conspirators planned to kill the Secretary of State, William H. Seward, and also Vice President Andrew Johnson. But what is the story of the brutal executions of the Lincoln conspirators? Join us today as we find out, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The conspirators planned to, as mentioned, execute the President, and also two senior members of government, in the Secretary of State and Vice President. Booth was at the time the only well-known member of the conspiracy, and at the time access to the theatre's upper floor containing the presidential box was restricted. Booth was the only one who could gain access to the president. Abraham Lincoln arrived at Ford's Theatre in Washington DC to attend the play Our American Cousin, and he had been advised not to go but he promised his wife. The presidential party settled into their box and Lincoln then sat and watched the play. It was then said that, about 10.25pm, a man came in and walked slowly along the side on which the president's box was and I heard a man say, there's Booth, and I turned my head to look at him. He was still walking very slow and was near the box door when he stopped, took a card from his pocket, wrote something on it, and gave it to the usher, who took it to the box. In a minute the door was opened and he walked in. When he was in the hallway, Booth barricaded the door with a stick, then he entered Lincoln's box. Booth knew the play they were watching off by heart, and then he shot Lincoln at 10.15pm, when a comedic line was delivered, and when Lincoln was laughing. Booth opened the door and stepped forward, and from behind shot Lincoln with his pistol. The bullet entered his skull behind his left ear, and passed through the brain, coming to rest at the front of his skull, after fracturing both his orbital plates. Lincoln was left slumped over in the chair, and he fell back. Booth then shouted the word freedom, and then went on the run, jumping from box to box, and holding a knife over his head, and he did manage to exit the theatre through a side door, shortly after stabbing the orchestra leader. Lincoln was in a comatose condition, and the bullet was too deep to be removed, but the wound was then pronounced mortal. They tried to get him out of the theatre, and carefully seven men picked up the president, and then the theatre was filled with an angry mob, and they took him to a house across the way, the house of a tailor. Lincoln was then laid in a small bed, the doctors took off his clothes and found no other wounds, and they found that he was cold. He was covered in blankets, and a doctor tried to locate the bullet. Throughout the night the physicians tried to relieve the pressure on his brain. Lincoln died at 7.22am, around 10 hours after he was shot, and in his final moments his face became calm, and then, on his death, Vice President Johnson became the 17th President of the United States, but this was not the end of the matter. John Wilkes Booth had assigned Lewis Powell to kill Secretary of State William H. Seward, who was recovering from injuries on the night of the assassination, as he had been thrown from a carriage a few weeks before. Powell, carrying a Whitney revolver and a Bowie knife, knocked on the door, and he said he had medicine from Seward's doctor. He managed to make his way up to Seward's third floor bedroom, but was stopped at the top of the stairs by the Secretary of State's son. But then suspicion arose, and Powell aimed his pistol at Seward's son, but the pistol misfired, and he managed to bludgeon his son Frederick, knocking him out. Powell shoved his way to Seward's bed, and then he stabbed him in his face and neck, and sliced open his cheek. But as he was wearing a splint over his neck, he managed to avoid penetrating the juggler vein. Seward later recovered, and Powell then managed to run outside, and he was left on the run in an unfamiliar city. But there was a third part to the conspiracy, and Booth had assigned George Atzerod to kill Vice President Andrew Johnson, who was staying at the Kirkwood House in Washington. George was supposed to go to the room of Johnson at 10.15 and shoot him, and he rented the room directly above, and arrived carrying a gun and a knife. But he then got drunk, and wandered off through the streets, and he then threw the knife away, before he went to a different house and slept there. But following the assassination of Lincoln, 
the government then arrested several hundreds of people, and most of them were released due to lack of evidence, but the government would charge eight people with conspiracy. On the 1st of May 1865, President Andrew Johnson ordered the formation of a military commission to try those who were accused. A seven-week trial occurred, which included testimony of 366 witnesses. There was a nine-member commission, and death sentences required six members, and the trial then took place, and seven of the prisoners were found guilty of at least one of the conspiracy charges. Of those who were sentenced, four of the prisoners, Mary Surratt, Lewis Powell, George Atzerott, and David Herald, were sentenced to be hanged by the neck until he or she will be dead. Three others were sentenced to hard labour for life, and another received a six-year sentence. David Herald was an impressionable pharmacy clerk who accompanied John Wilkes Booth to the home of a doctor who then set Booth's leg. The two then escaped through Maryland and into Virginia, and he stayed with Booth until they were cornered in the barn. Herald then surrendered, but Booth was shot and killed. Lewis Powell, as mentioned, was the man who failed to kill Secretary of State William Seward. Mary Surratt was the only woman sentenced to death in the plot, and she owned the boarding house in Washington, where the conspirators met, and she became the first woman to be executed by the United States federal government. Finally, George Astorot was sentenced to death, the man recruited to kill Vice President Andrew Johnson. A 12-foot gallows had been created specially for the executions in the old Arsenal Penitentiary on the 7th of July 1865. It was a hot day, around 36 degrees Celsius, and as the condemned made their way to the gallows, they passed a number of cheap pine coffins and shallow graves that had been dug for them. It must have been scary for those four condemned, and they were forced to climb the gallows, and they had heard them previously the night before being tested whilst they were in the prison cells nearby. As the four were led onto the scaffold, the noose was placed around the neck of the accused, along with a white hood, which was placed over their heads too. Many people were there to watch, and they believed that Mary Surratt would be saved, or would be given a stay of execution, but that was not the case. Following the administration of the last rites, after 1.30pm, the trapdoors sprung open, and all four of them fell. George screamed, May we meet again in another world, but within minutes they were all dead. The bodies were left hanging and swinging for 25 minutes before they were cut down and confirmed dead. The Lincoln Conspiracy was a plan to bring down the United States government, and it succeeded with the killing of the President. It failed in other respects, as the Vice President and Secretary of State were not killed, but on a huge gallows, four main conspirators were sentenced to death and were executed in front of a huge crowd. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.